Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. And did you ever wonder just how far apart the air molecules are? Well, I have. And today we're going to figure out how far apart they actually are. I'm sure you remember seeing back in a textbook somewhere the three different phases of matter. You had your solids, your liquids, and your gases. Solids, we were told, had their molecules so close together that nothing could get through. They stayed in nice, tight shapes, and that's the way that was. Liquids, however, had their molecules a little bit farther apart. They were able to freely move about, and p light, people, and submarines could just go right on through them without too much effort. And then you had gases. They were represented by dots just all over the place. And we were told that those molecules are ridiculously far apart. That's why we're able to easily move through it, we can see through it, and there's really no problem at all. But then I got to thinking, well, just how far apart are these molecules anyway? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to treat air as an ideal gas. An ideal gas, at standard temperature and pressure, we are told one mole of this stuff occupies 22.4 liters. Okay. But just how much is that? It's about this much. There are four bottles missing, and it's really heavy. Unfortunately, that's not a super useful visualization. What we would like to do is to be able to figure out a uniform size. So we'll need to convert this. 22.41 liters. That's just a volume. We need something that sounds like a distance. Well. This isn't too hard to do. If you remember that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. Ah, right there. Something that sounds like a distance. Centimeters. Perfect. Well, we know that there are also a thousand of these in this. So we'll take a thousand times 22.41. Cool, we're getting closer. So we end up with 22,410 cubic centimeters in this amount of space. Okay. So what we want to do now is conceptualize this into something that is more easy to understand than 44 water bottles. So what we'll do is we'll draw a cube. Well, how big of a cube do we have to have? That's the question. Well, that's actually not too hard of an answer. We know that we need 22,410 cubic centimeters to fit in this cube, so all we got to do is take the cube root of this number to figure out what the dimensions of our cube are. Plugging this in, this gives us a cube that is 28, I'm going to go ahead and take this on out because we're going to need it, 28.1934 centimeters per side. For all you English speakers out there, this might be a little bit hard to visualize, but it's slightly over 11 inches. So we're almost a cubic foot here for uh, one mole of our gas. we got to figure out, well, how closely are these molecules packed in there? Well, another number that you'll probably never forget is the Avogadro's Law number, which states that one mole of a substance contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. In our case, um, air is oxygen and nitrogen. They're diatomic molecules, so we're going to use molecules in this case. So within this cube that's 28 centimeters on a side, we've got to fit this many molecules within it. Okay, so now all we have to do to figure out how far they are along one dimension is take the cube root of this number. After a bunch of grueling math, we find out that there are slightly over 84 million molecules along one of these distances. That's an awful lot of molecules. Well, just how close are they then? Well, that's easy to figure out. We simply take this number here, our distance, divided by the amount of stuff that's in that distance to get our distance between molecules. And that number is... 3.339 nanometers. That's ridiculously close. Much closer than I actually thought it would be. To put that in perspective, a typical piece of paper is four thousandths of an inch thick. That means that over 30,000 air molecules could stack up 
in the thickness of a piece of paper. So I guess the textbooks kind of led to the wrong impression. These molecules really aren't that far apart. In terms of solids and liquids, yes they are, but my goodness, that is ridiculously close. So don't worry about your airplane falling out of the sky next time you uh, go for a flight. And don't worry about running out of air because there's plenty right under your nose. I'm Mike Thompson. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.